Hello, YouTube friends and family. This is Sandra Brown of Happiness Past 60. Actually, I'm going to be 81 on the 25th. I can't hardly believe it. But I just thank God I feel as good as I do. And I just thought today, maybe we'll just, uh, I was thinking about maybe reminiscing a little bit, maybe about one of the best Christmas memories you have. It doesn't have to be some big, important thing. It's just something that just made you feel good. And I was trying to think myself what it would be. Well, it wasn't a Christmas where I'm thinking about what I got for Christmas. It was a Christmas that I had given someone else something that just made me feel so good. And it was when my parents were, were living. And my mother, of course, well, if she was living, she'd be way over 100. But she didn't have any photographs of herself. And there was, they used to come to the house. You probably remember that. They'd come to your house and they would um, take photographs in your home. Well, I think she had a, a tooth that she had had removed on the side. And so when she smiled, that would show. So she made sure she was turned the other way so that wouldn't show. And um, then they had her, she had a, some pearls on and she was holding her hands up and she didn't like the way her hands looked. And the photograph was black and white, but you know those little things that bothered her. Well, I was just learning to mess around with art myself. And there, I used pastels, which was actually, it's like a chalk, but they're called pastels. And and they, you uh, can draw or paint on a, um, it was, it's like a velvet type of paper. It picks up the chalk really nice. I'd never done anything like that, but I was in this class and, uh, the, you know, the art teacher assisted me a little bit to show me how to get going on it. But I did a portrait of, of my mom as best I could. <laughs> and I had it framed. So I had that for her. And then, I don't know if you remember this, but this was real popular for a while. They would take like a shadow box, I think it was called. And my father, his, he lost his mother when he was maybe I think six years old, five or six years old. And so it was always a tender spot with him. And I had this old picture of his mom and dad. And I took the cover off of the shadow box and that was um, glued right in the middle of it. And then at that time, what they were doing is each one of the little boxes you'd put something in. I can't remember what I put in these little boxes. But it was the cutest thing when I was done. And just to see their faces when they opened these. And my mom's exact words were, Oh, Sandy Lee, you didn't. Oh my gosh, Daddy, look at this. Talking to my dad. And dad was so tickled over his gift. Yeah. Or the times when my children were little. And I was so excited about giving them, well, my daughter, Dawn, I love dolls. And I remember getting her a doll in a suitcase with some clothes. It was something I would have loved to have when I was little. And I was so excited about giving that to her. And uh, my son, Rusty, <laughs> the drum set that he, he, he beat a hole in in no time at all. Just... Things like that were just good memories for me. I was thinking it wasn't the things that I got that was making me so happy. It was what I was giving away. I, but oh my, don't get me wrong. I loved getting gifts, and I and I remember some how much I enjoyed that. But those were my warmest memories. Is what I gave to somebody else. So maybe you'd like to share that with me a little bit. Some memories you have. Okay, if I have time to do all these things I wanted to do, but I, I got some quotes. Some of you seem to like 
the quotes I had before. Okay, here's one. Repetitive complaining will attract things for you to complain about. Mm. Repeated gratitude will attract things for you to be thankful for. It's so true. You know when we're complaining, and sometimes we're just raised with that in a family where they just complained all the time. And it can just be a habit that we picked up. And it's something that we have to overcome because it's the truth. It attracts bad things to you. And you know what? No one else wants to hear it. They don't want to be around it. So it's a good idea if you can just try to stop that. Every time you catch yourself, maybe say out loud, no, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to replace that with something I'm thankful for. Let me know how you're doing on that. <laughs> okay, here's the next one. Faith is when you praise God in the storm. You trust him in the valley and you follow him in the dark. That's what faith is. When you praise God in the storm and you trust him in the valley and you follow him in the dark. Here are seven rules of life. One, make peace with your past so it won't disturb your present. Two, what other people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That'll drag you crazy wondering what they're thinking about you. Three, time heals almost everything. Give it time. And it's true. It doesn't make it go away, but it heals it so much it's quite bearable. And you can go on with your life. Four, no one is in charge of your happiness except you. That's kind of good to know, right? It doesn't matter what anybody else does. I'm in charge of my happiness. I'm not going to let them affect me. Not easy, but you can do it. Five, don't compare your life to others and don't judge them. You have no idea what their journey is all about. So true. Oh my gosh, we can look at other people's lives and why are they doing that? I wouldn't have done it that way or why. And you know, if we were raised like they were and we were in their circumstances, we might have done the same thing. So don't judge. And besides that, God didn't put us here to judge. He put us here to love. We're not the judge. He's the judge. I don't think it's a good idea to do it at all. Okay, what's the next one? Stop thinking too much. It's all right not to know the answers. I think that would be what they're talking about is in your life, things that are happening in your life. Look, why did this happen to me? Why, you know, why did that circumstance, why did my life turn out like this? We don't need to know all the answers, and we never will. So don't drive yourself crazy with it. Maybe one day when we get to heaven, we will. But right now, we don't have to. Number seven, smile. You don't own all the problems in the world. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we read all these problems and we like feel like we have to solve them all. We don't. And if you want to pray, go ahead and pray for someone, but then don't keep it up. Don't keep it on your shoulders all the time. Give it to the Lord. This is a nice thought. I woke up. I have heat in my house. I hope you do have heat in your house. <laughs> I have running water, and I hope you do. I have food to eat, and I hope you do. I have clothes to wear. Life is good. I am blessed. I am thankful. If we just have that, wow. Heat, running, water, food, and clothes. My goodness. We have no right to be feeling sorry for ourselves. Many people in this world don't have these simple things. If we have that, you know, that's enough. That is enough. 
Okay, and the last one. I love it when people that have been through hell walk out of the flames carrying buckets of water for those still consumed by the fire. Oh, that's great. That's great. Okay, let's, here's an example. If you lost your husband or your wife, you've been through hell, but come out of those flames carrying buckets of water to help somebody else who's going through the same thing. If you've lost a child, don't sit around be feeling sorry for yourself all the time. Carry buckets of water to somebody else who's lost a child. They need your help. There's so many circumstances, so many of you. If you've lost a job and you see someone else has lost a job and you know how that feels, carry buckets of water to them, help them out, encourage their hearts. I know you can do it, my friends. I know you can do it. So I'm just thankful for this day, thankful for this season, thankful for our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I just pray that all of you, in the name of Jesus, will be healed in your bodies, healed in your minds, that you won't be lonely anymore. Send someone to you. And those of you who want a boyfriend or a mate or someone just to go out to dinner with, Lord, send them someone. If there's problems in your family, I pray for peace and restoration with all your family members and your friends. Let there be peace. Walk close to the Lord. Don't forget to talk to him every day. Okay, you guys, I love you very much. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.